The movement and shifting of land masses across the Earth's surface have been a fascinating subject of study for geologists, archaeologists, and scientists alike for many years. It is a well-established fact that the Earth's continents were once united in a vast supercontinent known as Pangaea almost 300 million years ago. Over time, the landmass separated and shifted to form the distinct continents we know today, such as North and South America, Africa, and Europe. Despite our understanding of the process by which continents can move and shift, there are still many unanswered questions regarding natural phenomena on Earth. One such mystery is why ice ages occur and how they can have such a profound effect on the planet. Another is why emperor penguins walk miles inland to lay their eggs in the Antarctic winter when temperatures can drop to 40 degrees below zero. The north magnetic pole of the Earth is also rapidly moving towards Russia at a rate of more than 40 miles per year, causing scientists to wonder what is driving this unusual behavior. And yet, even with all these questions unanswered, there is evidence to suggest that the answers may be found in the phenomenon of pole shifts. Pole shifts are global disasters that occur when the entire outer crust of the Earth moves at once, causing massive changes in the planet's geography and climate. When a pole shift occurs, areas near the North and South Poles move towards the equator by thousands of miles, which in turn causes ice caps to melt in warmer latitudes. Conversely, Areas near the equator move away from the tropics and into colder climates, leading to a significant shift in the Earth's weather patterns. The impact of pole shifts on the Earth and those who inhabit it can be catastrophic. The end of civilizations and mass extinctions are believed to have been caused by these regular and predictable shifts for tens of thousands of years. There is still much to learn about the Earth's natural phenomena, and studying pole shifts can provide insight into some of the biggest questions we face as a species. It's common knowledge that the Earth's land masses are not stationary and can shift over time. This was demonstrated by the existence of the supercontinent Pangaea which existed around 300 million years ago and eventually separated into the separate continents we know today. However, the question remains, how do these shifts occur and what impact do they have on our world? Scientists have been studying the mysteries of the Earth for centuries, including phenomena such as ice ages, animal migrations, and changes in the Earth's magnetic field. One such mystery is the occurrence of pole shifts, when the entire outer crust of the Earth moves at once, causing the North and South Poles to move towards the equator. These pole shifts can have a major impact on our planet. As land near the equator moves into the Ecuador bulge, it sinks below sea level, while land that was previously underwater rises to the surface. This can result in changes in altitude and latitude that are so extreme they could be mistaken for the end of the world. Earthquakes and tsunamis can also accompany pole shifts, which can lead to widespread destruction and bring civilization back to the Stone Age. While some may consider the idea of pole shifts to be a far-fetched theory, Many credible experts have written about it, including history professors, electrical engineers, and naval admirals. Even Albert Einstein wrote the foreword to a book on the subject, citing the concept of mass imbalances causing a movement of the Earth's crust. Sir Isaac Newton also believed that mass imbalances could cause the poles to move around the globe, as the mass would always try to move away from the center of its motion. Since then, Dozens of scientists have found evidence that pole shifts have occurred before and will happen again. One of the most well-known advocates of the pole shift theory was Professor Charles Hapgood. Although he wrote several books on the subject, including Earth's Shift in Crust, Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings, and Path of the Pole, he often contradicted himself in terms of how quickly a pole shift could be catastrophic. In Path of the Pole, he discusses Ernst Deutsch's book, polar wandering and continental drift, in which Deutsche argues that pole shifts happen very slowly. However, Hapgood notes that Deutsche found evidence in Scotland of a crustal shift happening much faster than previously thought, potentially thousands or even tens of thousands of times faster. In conclusion, the idea of pole shifts is not a new one and has been studied by numerous experts throughout history. While the precise timing and effects of such shifts remain uncertain, it's clear that they have the potential to cause significant changes to our planet and could have catastrophic consequences for human civilization. Habgood asserted that the pole must have shifted from his old home to his new one at an unusually fast rate, possibly in a much shorter time than a millennium. 
This led some to speculate whether Habgood was succumbing to pressure from politics and peers who favored uniformitarian models that ignored evidence of sudden catastrophic events. Others wondered if he was deliberately withholding the truth for more sinister reasons. Despite his prior affiliation with the CIA's predecessor, the Office of Strategic Services, Habgood seemed to take risks in his later work. In 1982, he wrote a letter to Flemeth, co-author of When the Sky Fell, about his new book, which he claimed would contain exciting new evidence of a whole cycle of civilization in America and Antarctica. Unfortunately, Habgood passed away before he could publish his work, leaving behind questions about the veracity of his claims and whether he had stumbled upon government secrets. Interestingly, Habgood was not the only one to believe in the theory of a sudden pole shift causing massive destruction. In a lesser-known book called The Adam and Eve Story by Chan Thomas, the author also discussed this theory, although the original book is no longer available, and a CIA-published version is heavily censored. Chan Thomas, an author whose book was heavily censored by the CIA, claimed that a catastrophic pole shift would wipe out human life in the not-too-distant future. Thomas believed that the Earth's poles shift at almost regular intervals, causing natural disasters that devastate civilization. He argued that the current era is the sixth advanced civilization to evolve on Earth, but it's difficult to confirm whether previous civilizations were even more advanced due to the difficulty of verifying their existence, especially those that lived on now extinct continents. Thomas was convinced that the next pole shift would happen instantly and without warning. He described the destruction that would follow as earthquakes shook the California mountains like ferns in a breeze and the Pacific Ocean piled up into a mountain of water two miles high before racing eastward at a thousand miles per hour to bury cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco. The cause of such violent wind would be the earth spinning at a thousand miles per hour, with the air and water continuing to spin but the land masses stopping. This would cause the Earth's molten sublayer to break through and create a sea of white-hot liquid fire, obliterating all traces of human civilization in a fraction of a day. Thomas's theories were met with skepticism from the scientific community, and the CIA went to great lengths to censor his work. Despite this, many people still believe in his ideas, and some even claim that the government is hiding evidence of a coming pole shift to avoid causing panic. Regardless of the truth of his theories, Thomas's work highlights the fragility of human civilization and the possibility of devastating natural disasters. It's a reminder that we should cherish and protect the world we live in, while also being prepared for the worst. In conclusion, while Chan Thomas's ideas may seem far-fetched to some, they represent an important warning about the dangers of climate change and the need to take care of our planet. The fury will march on for six days and on the sixth day the ocean will start to settle. The Bay of Bengal base in just east of India would now be at the North Pole, and the Pacific Ocean just west of Peru would end up at the South Pole. New ice caps will begin to form in the newly formed polar areas. That's when Greenland and Antarctica, which are now rotating equatorially, will emerge with a verdant tropical foliage. Yes, this sounds like the end of the world, but this isn't the only shift that should have you worried. Another shift in the poles that are finally being talked about today is the magnetic shift of the pulse. Another possibility that we might have to deal with is the problem that comes with the weakening magnetic pulse. And no, it won't take a million years, not even a thousand, but only the next couple hundred. If the Earth's magnetic field were to weaken a lot, it could collapse and change magnetic north to south and south to north, and the world would be in a lot of trouble. If this goes on, which it will, whether we like it or not, it's just nature, which is also what makes it even more terrifying. The fact is we may be heading straight for this. Dr. Nicholas Toveni from the European Centre for Research and Teaching of Environmental Geosciences in Exxon Province, France, explained that the geomagnetic field has been weakening for the past 3,000 years. And if it continued to weaken at this rate, humanity would find itself in a critical situation in less than a thousand years. Dr. Toveni is one of the main people in charge of the Edifice project, which has been going on since 2014. He and his co-workers have been looking into the history of the Earth's magnetic field, like when it has switched directions in the past and when it might do so again. The main thing that causes our planet to have a magnetic field is the flow of liquid iron inside its core. 
It has always been a part of Earth, but its polarity has changed many times in the planet's history. Each time it flips, which has happened up to 100 times in the last 20 million years, it can take up to 1,000 years to finish. It leaves fossilized magnetization in rocks on Earth. Scientists have discovered a way to look back in time and understand changes in the Earth's magnetic field. They take cores or columns of sediment from the seafloor, which look like straws and can go down to 300 meters. By studying these samples, they can determine when and how the Earth's magnetic field changed. Dr. Thovani and his team used two types of elements to get more information about the history of Earth's magnetic field. For the polarity to change, the magnetic field must weaken by about 90% to a certain level. This process can take thousands of years, and during that time, the planet's lack of a magnetic field lets more high-energy particles from other parts of the universe, called cosmic rays, hit Earth. This results in an increase in the number of cosmogenic isotopes like carbon-14 and beryllium-10, which fall to the surface. By studying how many of these isotopes are in the cores, scientists can figure out when the polarity changed. An excursion is a change in the Earth's magnetic field that occurs when the field strength drops a lot but doesn't quite reach the threshold it needs to reach before going back up. There have been 15 excursions in the last 20 million years, and the last one occurred almost 40,000 years ago. There are signs that the Earth is on its way to experiencing another one soon. Dr. Thovany's team believes that the geomagnetic field will drop to near zero in a few hundred or a thousand years, which is not good news. A weakening magnetic field is already affecting our satellites in space. In the Atlantic Ocean, between South America and Africa, there is a large area where the Earth's magnetic field is about three times weaker than at the poles. This area is called the South Atlantic Anomaly SA, and Professor Chris Finley from the Technical University of Denmark is researching it as part of the CORSAP project. The fact that the SA is expanding is a clear indication that the Earth's magnetic field is weakening. This article discusses the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field and its potential impact on the planet. To study the changes in the magnetic field, scientists use cores or columns of sediment from the seafloor, which can go down to 300 meters. By analyzing two types of elements, they can get more information about the history of the Earth's magnetic field. Changes in polarity occur when the magnetic field weakens by about 90%, and during this time, more high-energy particles from other parts of the universe called cosmic rays hit the planet. As a result, more atoms in the atmosphere get hit by cosmic rays, producing cosmogenic isotopes like carbon-14 and beryllium-10 that fall to the surface. By studying the number of these isotopes in the cores, scientists can determine when the polarity changed. The last excursion occurred almost 40,000 years ago, and there are signs that we are on our way to experiencing it again. The Earth's magnetic field has lost 30% of its strength in the last 3,000 years, and it is estimated that it will drop to near zero in a few hundred or thousand years. This weakening magnetic field is already affecting our satellites in space, particularly in the area between South America and Africa in the Atlantic Ocean, known as the South Atlantic Anomaly or SA. Scientists are trying to figure out what is causing the SA by using data from several satellites, such as the three swarm satellites launched by the European Space Agency in 2013. The Corsair project is researching the SA, hoping to find out what might be happening inside the Earth's core to cause it. One possibility is that there is a large anticyclone in the southern part of Earth's liquid metal outer core that is pushing the magnetic field away from the South Atlantic region. Another possibility is that the magnetic field in this area is pointing in the wrong direction, similar to a small change in polarity. The SA gives us a direct look at how a weaker magnetic field can affect satellites. Many spacecraft have reported electronic problems when flying over this area because cosmic rays hit them, but it is not clear yet if the SA has anything to do with the reversal of Earth's magnetic field. Scientists are also studying simulations to see if the SA might grow when the poles switch, but this is not yet confirmed. The decrease in the geomagnetic field is much more important and dramatic than the reversal of the poles. Scientists believe it is essential to know if the current field will fade away to nothing in the next hundred years because we will need to get ready for it. 